quantum simulation means that we simulate the behavior of one quantum system with another quantum system. In other words, if there is one quantum system which is maybe complicated to prepare or certain things happen on a microscopic scale, if I can create another quantum system where on a whole different scale the same equations apply, then the same equations have the same solution. That means this system behaves like the other system and I can study the first system by deeply analyzing the second system. So this is meant by quantum simulation. Create a system, a quantum system, which has the same properties as the system you're interested in, but which is easier to manipulate and easier to study. So that means that within the field of ultra-cold atoms, that we use ultra-cold atoms to recreate a quantum system which has interesting properties. And you can say it started early on. The Bose-Einstein condensate is a superfluid gas. And as such, you can regard it as a quantum simulator for superfluid liquid helium. Superfluid liquid helium is much more complicated, but some aspects of superfluid helium, especially the equations for superfluidity, are similar or are the same as we can implement with the Bose-Einstein condensate. So often when we say quantum simulation, we don't want to quantum simulate the messy part of the system we are interested. We want to build an idealized, simplified model. And Bose-Einstein condensation is the most pristine, the most simplified model of superfluid liquid helium. When we took fermionic atoms and paired them up and studied the superfluid character, we had done a quantum simulator of superconductivity. We realized the simplest system, which was described by the so-called BCS, Baring cooper schrieffer theory for superconductivity, which is used to describe many superconductors. But we had sort of taken it in its pure form. We didn't have a lot of other complications. We had just directly built, stripped it to the bare bones and built an idealized BCS superfluid. And this idea of simulating a quantum system with ultra-cold atoms uh, is now the goal for many, many research groups. Just to give you other examples, we are interested in magnetic behavior, ferromagnetic, interferomagnetic ordering. And we want to use our atomic Legos to arrange atoms in a periodic lattice and look for ordering that the spins of the atoms are either parallel or anti-parallel, there will be phase transitions and such. So we want to use ultra-cold atoms as a toolbox, like a box of Legos, and quantum simulate in its purest form magnetic behavior which is not yet fully understood. Just to give you two other directions, uh, one, of the major, one of the biggest discoveries in condensed matter physics have been topological insulators and Majorana fermions. We hope that very soon we are able to quantum simulate those materials, in other words, recreate those materials with ultra-cold atoms, but then we have a system where we can change parameters, we can use very different forms of study, we can look at the system sometimes atom by atom and gain much more insight into these two new classes of material. Or to give you a final example, in one of my labs we are, we've, we've started to study what would happen to electrons in very high magnetic fields. And I'm talking about magnetic fields which are 10 or 100 times stronger than the strongest magnets on Earth. So we want to understand what would happen to electrons in such magnetic fields which cannot yet be produced because of technical limitations. So what we are doing is we are using ultra-cold atoms and then we are shining laser light on them and the laser light makes the atoms move around exactly in the same way as electrons move in a strong magnetic field. So using laser light, we are implementing the equations of motion for electrons in high magnetic field.
So now we have a system of ultra-cold atoms which behaves in the same way as electrons in magnetic fields which cannot be realized in the laboratory. So now we have a quantum simulator which is actually simulating a form of matter which does not yet exist on Earth because we don't have the magnetic fields to produce them. So this is how we want to sort of move the boundaries of our understanding of materials and figure out what is in principle possible in nature, even if it cannot yet be technically realized. So this gives you sort of some ideas what quantum simulators can do for us. But I should actually sometimes say that when I create a Bose-Einstein condensate, I feel I've created a new superfluid and not just simulated a superfluid which has maybe already existed. So the two aspects of creating a new system with ultra-cold atoms or emphasizing analogies to other systems, which would be called quantum simulation, go hand in hand. The concept of quantum simulation can be traced back to Richard Feynman, who said in the 80s that it would be very powerful if he could create a quantum system which would be analogous to another quantum system, and thus we would have quantum simulator. I mean, this was an idea which people had in their mind, but, uh, it, but there was major new interest in this idea in the, con in the context of quantum computation. In a way, a quantum computer is a quantum system which can be programmed to simulate any form of matter you can think of because you can program your quantum behavior, you can program your quantum computer. However, we do not yet have, and probably we won't have it for a long time, a general purpose quantum computer. So what we do with ultra-cold atoms can be regarded as a special purpose quantum computer which cannot be freely programmed, but by choosing the kind of atoms and the interactions and forces between the atoms, we have now a quantum simulator, some people would say an analog quantum computer for a special purpose, namely solving the equations which, which describe certain forms of matter. The major challenge in quantum simulation is to do the simulation right. We have to control every single aspect. And so for quantum simulation, we often need, uh, we have to put, you know, we have to need perfect, a perfect system. We have to perfectly prepare. Sometimes we try to do a quantum simulation. We arrange laser beams and atoms and what happens is puff, the atoms just heat up. And then we are back to the drawing board. We have to figure out what is responsible for the heating. Sometimes it's just technical noise, but sometimes it's something fundamental we have to understand. So we are at the frontier of knowledge. We are at the frontier of science. And almost by default, everything we try first doesn't work, and we have to figure out how to make it work. So it's ultimately moving the barrier is moving the frontier of knowledge and doing more and more sophisticated quantum simulation is Uh, an endeavor where we have to learn to master technology, but also where we have to develop a deeper understanding of ultra-cold atoms and how they interact, for instance, with laser light, and then we can use it to our advantage and quantum simulate new materials. What would be the steps from a quantum simulator to a quantum computer? Well, first, quantum computer and quantum simulators have a lot in common. They require control over quantum systems. They require that we keep the system cold, we keep it in a pure quantum state, so we don't like heating and dissipation. But quantum simulators are, at this stage, easier to realize in quantum computers because we can put many atoms together, they interact, and that's how they perform the quantum simulation. In a general purpose quantum computer, you want to be able to control or, so to speak, to program each individual atom. So you may need a way to have sharply focused laser beams, which can, so to speak, tell each atom what to do and such. So there are many more complications and technical steps uh, until you can have a general purpose quantum computer. So currently, there are dozens of research group who pursue quantum simulation with ultra-cold atoms. Quantum computation is even a bigger field. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of research group who pursue quantum computation with all sorts of different systems, solid-state systems, 
people use uh, uh, ion traps uh, and people use neutral atoms. So the field of quantum computation covers a wide area of methods and people don't know yet which system will be the easiest to realize a quantum computer because nobody can predict with which system it will be easiest to overcome uh, the outstanding problems. So what is the difference between quantum simulation and quantum computation? Well, I mentioned they have something in common, but there are also differences. In quantum computation, you have, for instance, uh, several ions and each ion forms a qubit. And in order to perform a quantum computation, you have to control the quantum state of each individual part of your quantum computer. Each qubit uh, you want to program and you want each qubit to perform uh, in a programmable way quantum operations. In a quantum simulation, this is not necessary. We just throw many atoms, you can call them qubits together, but then they interact with each other through their natural forces. So in other words, in a quantum simulator, we pick the atoms in such a way that they interact with each other the way we want them to interact without individually programming it. So you can say it's maybe more the top-down approach that we use many atoms and we make sure they interact and do their thing. In the quantum computer is more bottom-up approach. You take atom by atom, you program each atom to do what you want to do, and then with the quantum algorithm, you get those atoms to perform the quantum computation you want them to do. So currently, quantum computation, this approach of programming each atom, is limited to, I forgot what currently the record is, to about, let's say, 20 ions, 20 qubits. Whereas quantum simulations with neutral atoms are often done with 10,000 or a million atoms because we do not have to program them atom by atom. But I expect that in the future the two areas of quantum computation and quantum simulation will actually grow together and ultimately one vision which myself and my colleagues here in the Center for Ultra Cold Atoms pursue is that the top-down and the bottom-up approach may actually meet in the middle.